boys. That was spicy. That was spicy. Feels good. I had no food. I had to hide behind this statue just to get my food on. All right, guys, here we go. Impromptu build video. Stamina Night Blade. I've been using this for a long time. It's a very, very strong build. It can take some damage. It can roll around with the best of them. It can burst people. You're tankier than people expect you to be. And uh, you can certainly lay them out. This is mainly for open world Cyrodiil. You can make some slight changes to it to go into battlegrounds with it. Something simple like putting on Phantasmal Escape here to get yourself major evasion. You can just slot that in for Camel Hunter and run Soul Tether instead of Incap. I kind of go back and forth between Incap and Soul Tether. But here we go. Let's get straight into the gear because that's what everybody's here for anyways. Okay. So here's what we've got going on. We are running the Gaze of Pariah, as I like to call it. This setup consists of running five Pariah, including the jewelry, the three jewelry pieces, all infused, or sorry, two infused, one swift, all weapon damage enchants, and the Gaze of Sithis. So we got Gaze of Sithis on the helmet. I've decided to leave it Divines, that's the trait that it dropped in, it, I've yet to find a good reason to switch it, but we are running Sithis, Pariah, using the three jewelry pieces, like I said, and the chest and legs, and we've crafted Wretched Vitality for the back bar. So we're running three medium, well-fitted Wretched Vitality, and a Defending Bow. The Disease Enchant is whatever, because I also run the double dot poisons on the back bar. And on the front bar, we've got a perfected Vatishran Maul. So that does it for the gear. Let's take a quick little run over the CP here. We've got Ironclad for the 10% reduced damage from direct damage attacks. We've got Master at Arms to increase our damage done with direct damage attacks by another 10%. I've been really enjoying running Weapons Expert since Nightblade really plays a, a lot on having your light and heavy attack damage go through to proc up your Merciless Resolve attack. So I've been really enjoying running Weapons Expert. This increases your light and heavy attack damage by 15%. And Duelist Rebuff that reduces the amount of damage that I take from single target effects by 10%. That's for the blue tree there. And for the red tree, we've gone with Survival Instincts. While you've got a status effect on you, your core combat skills cost 5% less. That would be blocking, roll dodging, sprinting, and such. Uh, we've got relentlessness. Being stunned or feared causes you to have my major protection for 3 seconds. Juggernaut. While under the effect of crowd control immunity, you take less 1% less damage per stage. So it's 5% less damage while we are immune to crowd control. So once you break free for the next 7 seconds or so, you take 5% less damage. And Boundless Vitality to increase our max health. We are not running any food on this build that gives us max health. Being that we are getting plenty of max health from running Sithis and Pariah, I'm actually using Lava Foot, Soup, and Sultries. This gives me maximum stamina, as well as stamina recovery for two hours. It's um, pretty strong in this instance, being that on my back bar... We are at tw just over 28k max health, and on the front bar, we're sitting 27.3 max health. But we've also got a nice stamina pool at 29k on the back bar and a little over 30 on the front bar. Due to having the Vatishran Mall, we've got a little bit more max stam on the front bar. Breaking down into the traits of everything a little bit here. Again, I'm gone. Uh, I've left the Gaze of Sithis Divines. Feel free to do whatever you would like with that piece. Again, the traits are kind of preferential. If you want to run more well-fitted, go with that. You feel like you want a little more uh, resistance, you can try and go with um, maybe some reinforced pieces if you would like. But I've gone Divines with the Gaze of Sithis, Impen for both of the Pariah pieces, three well-fitted. All of my medium pieces on the body are all well-fitted. For the jewelry, as I said before, we've got two infused and one swift. The Vatishran Maul is 
sharpened, and defending on the back bar for the bow. This actually equals a nice juicy amount of resistance. Here's my shade, and now we've got our major resolve buff. We are at 32.5k physical and spell resistance, and that is not counting the amount of mitigation that I would get from having Sithis, or sorry, uh, Pariah procced up. So keep that in mind. There's actually a fair amount more resistance that uh, the build is capable of. So on top of that resistance, with this is with the 2H passive active. There you go. in here so we can see what our recovery would be and then we'll just uh minor endurance with that and here we are at 21 2100 and that is not counting the buff that we would get from wretched vitality which equals another total of 516 magic and spell recovery in order to proc the spell recovery it's uh the spell and uh, sorry the magic and stam recovery you need an ability that will apply a minor and major debuff you need to apply a minor and or major debuff to yourself sorry you need to apply a minor and major buff or debuff to either yourself or another target in this case we happen to have shade summon shade here will apply minor maim to your target as well as give you major resolve so this gives you your armor buff and when it hits your target it, it applies minor maim to them which uh, would give you the other part of the wretched vitality buff so this equals a ton of sustain it goes from 1500 all the way up to i think 3.8k fully buffed with um with continuous attack and the 2h passive and a potion active you're looking at almost 4k recovery which is insane we're also a khajiit so this means we're benefiting from having extra critical damage and extra critical healing, which is why I am running the Thief Stone. I have ran the Warrior on this setup. Uh, I just find that I get much better results running the Thief as I am a Khajiit. It's, it's upping my crit, my amount of uh, actual weapon crit. It's not incredibly high, but it certainly makes a difference. Uh, the resist crit resist not incredibly high but we've got that base physical and spell resistance that is quite high so overall um i've been having a lot of fun with this build for quite some time now and um yeah let's let's just quickly go over the skills here we've got leeching strikes on the back bar this is helping our sustain as well as, as a little bit of healing this is gonna this is very very strong for nightblade this is almost essential in my mind. It's a lot of sustain that comes from this, as well as you don't really think about it when when you're thinking about what skills to run, but that little bit of healing that you get from your light attacks and heavy attacks does add up, being that you are constantly wanting to be light attacking in between all of your abilities in order to keep your relentless focus proc constantly coming. But back to the back bar here. We got Leeching Strikes. We are running Shadow Image, probably the best kiting ability in the game, bar Streak. But at least with Shadow Image, you can vertically kite people. Streak, you can watch them streak over the horizon. But if you've got Shade, you can, you can use Shade to go up and or down on your opponent. Several levels out of keeps and back onto the wall and such things. Very, very strong skill if you get used to using it on a regular basis. Resolving Vigor, I don't really need to explain much about this. It's a standard heal. It's a great, fantastic heal over time. If you're running on a stamina build, you're probably running it. Soon to be probably a few magic builds running it. We've got Reaper's Mark. This is going to be our debuff, uh, another debuff that we can run uh, to proc Wretched um, Vitality. This is going to give uh, a nice little debuff, which is Major Breach, which reduces their spell and physical resistance by 5.9k. As well, if, when, if you kill a target who is marked, you get Major Berserk for 5 seconds. That increases your maximum damage done by 10%. Very, very strong, especially when you're fighting outnumbered and uh, you start just bursting people down. Always make sure that you've got this on the target that you're killing because it's just going to give you that much uh, more of a window to kill the next target directly after that. And we do have Shadowy Disguise. Being that this build is quite tanky, you don't need to be running around in stealth all of the time. You can use this sparingly and appropriately, um, but you can certainly just take damage and... Um, 
you know, when when used correctly, this is not going to be something you lean on on a regular basis. But it is very, very strong for some sneaky knife blade play. By all means, you can run Dark Cloak here. It completely changes the play style. You're not as tanky as it used to be, but it's still quite strong. It's very, very strong, actually, if you're going to run Dark Cloak. But uh, I don't really run a very high health pool, necessarily. So, And I really just like the sneaky play style. So Shadowy Disguise for me. We've got Temporal Guard. This is a Sigic Order ability. It is uh, wonderful for kiting when it works. Um, when it's not working, it just sits on our bar, giving us minor protection, which is reducing our damage taken by 5%. Pretty standard PvP, back bar, ultimate. You can use it in a pinch. Um, and you can certainly make some very, very interesting plays by using this in conjunction with Shade. Because you can use Shade, run away from it. You can use Undo to get back to it, then run away from it again, and then use Shade to get back to it. Or, you know, use the Shade and then use Undo to get back to where you originally kited to the Shade from. It's You can do a lot of interesting things with it when this ability works. I wouldn't rely on it very often. Now the front bar, we've got Camouflage Hunter. This is giving us a nice little passive amount of weapon critical as well as 5% more damage when we proc the Minor Berserk passive for hitting someone from a flank. I am fending off the werewolves here while we do this, but that's okay. Not a problem. All right. Maybe we can get, see 25, 25, 98 for uh, just killing that werewolf. So, stamina recovery. Very strong. Alright, moving on. Camouflage Hunter. It gives us some passive weapon damage from the passives over here. Increase 3% more weapon and spell damage while having Fighter's Guild ability slotted. That's great. We're also using it for the 5% extra damage that we get for attacking someone from a flank. As well as a little bit of weapon crit that we get. I will use this from time to time to pull Nightblades out of stealth. You can't always pop a Detection Potion. Uh, I just wouldn't go spamming this as it is quite expensive, and if you decide that you're going to spam it while chasing a Nightblade, you're sprinting and using this, and they're just going to turn around and pop you with a, uh, an in-cap anyway, so be wary if you're trying to use this to pull enemies out of stealth. Relentless Focus. This is the punch. This is this is what surprises people. Um, this is a an extremely strong skill. Always keep it up at all times. Always be light attacking. Keep in mind that you can heavy attack to gain two stacks of the five. If you are at three stacks and you heavy attack somebody, it will go straight to five hits. So you can heavy attack into the merciless proc if you time it properly. Very, very strong ability. Uh, every Nightblade should be using it. Uh, this is your main burst. It also provides you some weapon and spell damage while it is procced up. It doesn't need to be fired on cooldown, but there's very select situations in which you would, uh, you know, maybe delay it for the sake of surprising your opponent because it does let off an audio cue to let them know that it is ready to fire. And you will notice that your opponents start uh, getting very, very evasive when they hear that. They will assume that you are going to throw it almost immediately and they will start rolling around all over the place. So you can kind of toy with them a little bit and hang on to this and use it uh, accordingly. But very, very strong ability. Use it. Always make sure that it's up. Always keep be aware of what the count is because, uh, you know, as soon as it hit five, you should use it. You should be using it early and often because this is where a lot of your burst damage comes from. Rally. Staple of stamina. Uh, there's no reason not to use it. Minor endurance for 15% more recovery. Also, major brutality. This is another ability where if you didn't, say, have a Vatishran, stat or Vatishran uh, two-hander and you maybe wanted to run Wretched Vitality on both bars, this one skill could proc both of the benefits from Wretched Vitality because it gives you a major buff and a minor buff, as well as the healing that you get from it as well. Indispensable, fantastic ability. Yes. Uh, Executioner, this is how we finish people off if they don't die from Merciless Resolve. Uh, another wonderful ability, great for 1vx, great for any uh, any situation, really. And uh, in, in the case that this build is very, very single target focused, we are definitely going to be using Executioner, which is the single target morph, morph of the ability. Anytime that a player goes around 40%, you should be weaving this until they are no longer, uh, until they are either dead or heal back up above 50. But anywhere from about 40% below, you should be weaving your light attacks into Executioner's and if you manage to get a Merciless mixed in there, use that too. Surprise Attack, this is our main spammable damage ability. Incredibly strong. It uh, stuns people when you hit them from a flank. It also applies Sunder, which is uh, essentially, I believe, it's the same as Minor Breach. 
So very, very strong skill. It, it equals a lot of extra pen and uh, a, a great amount of pressure as well. For the ultimate, I do go back and forth between Incapacitating Strike and Soul Tether. Both are very strong. They definitely have their own reasons for running each one of them. Um, incapacitating Strike will give you a little bit more sustain on your front bar. While slotted, you gain Reeve, which restores 100 mag and stam when you deal damage with a lighter heavy attack. And Night Blades are all about landing light and heavy attacks. That is your bread and butter. That's how you build your burst for Merciless. It's, uh, it's everything. So it's, it's very, very good if you feel like you need a little bit more sustain. And obviously you get that stun when you have over 120 ultimate. Very, very good. Very single target. Uh, can be easy to dodge. Be wary of it. But it's still a fantastic skill. If you're not going to use that, the next choice I would definitely go with, personally, is Soul Tether. I will run Soul Tether if I'm in Battlegrounds, uh, more group uh, large scale big fights inside of keeps I would much rather have soul tether on this will stun everybody around you as well as heal heal you from the people that are stunned so for 8 seconds while you remain tethered to the enemies you siphon 1947 health from the enemy to you so if you do this in a large group of people this can be the difference between you being dead and um, almost immediately healing back to full while stunning them all at the same time also, it does provide a synergy that, you, that an ally can use in order to heal themselves as well. Fantastic. I would slot this uh, for Battlegrounds. The difference I would, the main change I would make would be slotting Phantasmal so that I can get Major Evasion, that uh, Snare Removal, as well as Major Evasion for the extra 20% reduced damage from AoEs. Super strong, as well as Soul Tether being more useful in a group setting where you're going to need to possibly stun more than one individual. This would be how I would do it if I was going to play in Battlegrounds. Um, I believe that is it. We've gone through the abilities. We've gone through the CP. You've seen what the gear looks like. Here's one last look at it. Uh, the stats are fantastic. We've got a fantastic amount of pen on the front bar. And this is the 11.7k minus the Major Breach and Sunder. So we're looking much closer to the uh, 20k mark. And um, I, I believe I've covered all of the bases here. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask in the comments section or come out the come and check out the live stream on Twitch. Uh, I stream most days of the week, PvP all the time on different classes. Uh, feel free to stop by and uh, say hi and share your thoughts on the build and what you may, you know, change about it if it was up to you or what uh, what you really like about it. Thanks for watching the video. And, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. I get what you mean. Sick. Good build, bro. You touch me one more time and I'm detect potting you. Okay, we got we got beef now, okay? We got beef now. Hey, hold this. Ah! Oh! How could you dodge? That was a really good bow ultimate, by the way. I'm really happy that you have that on your bar.